Okay, and we're live. Hey guys. Today we're talking about Super Mario Bros. Super Mario Brothers. But in this game, it's really just Mario. There is a two player where Luigi is seen if Mario dies, and then Mario's seen, and vice versa. I need to start over. Super Mario Bros. released in September 1985. At least in Japan, that's when it released. There's also a bit of speculation as to when the game actually came out in North America, but I shouldn't have even said that because I'm not even gonna get into that. Basically, we're talking about Super Mario Bros. And this actually isn't even the right Super Mario Bros. Yeah. So, Super Mario Bros. has director Shigeru Miyamoto and Takashi Tezuka. The game was programmed by Toshihiko Nakago and Kazuaki Morita. And the music was done by the legendary Koji Kondo. So, the first thing I can say about Super Mario Bros. is that the game is hard extremely hard i i have played a few games in this franchise quite a few i've played super mario bros 3 and i've beaten that game i've played pieces of super mario bros 2 super mario world was one of the first games i even remember playing but super mario bros is significantly harder than any of those games and i think part of that has to do with the controls. Jumping and running, these things have gotten exponentially better over time with games. And that's extremely apparent when you play Super Mario Bros. However, you do get used to the game. Once you get used to the game, that's when it starts becoming fun. So there's eight worlds and there are four stages per world. There's two modes, single player and multiplayer, but you're probably gonna be playing this in single player because it doesn't alternate with every level, it alternates when you die. So if one player is much better than the other player, the other players aren't going to see much playtime. The game is also filled with secrets, and that's something that it has that is a huge advantage over some of the other earlier titles for the NES slash Famicom. There are things to discover in Super Mario Bros. There are shortcuts, there are secrets, there are secret paths, secret tunnels. Discovering the secrets and taking advantage of them is probably one of the most fun aspects of this game. Like, there's no saving in the game, but it's easy to get back to wherever you left off once you know where the warp zones are, which there are two, technically three of, maybe more, and I just don't know. There are long levels and varied levels. There are areas above levels, areas below levels, and there are lots and lots of pipes, and you will be squatting. You will be popping a squat on each and every one. So I had played this game a little bit before, um, on the 3DS. That has been a pattern with a lot of these early titles because they were given to me for free because I bought the 3DS before the price cut. But I have some fond memories of Super Mario Bros despite not beating it until this week. What I used to do, I used to sit in my dorm room or I should say lay in my dorm room because this was something that we would do before we go to bed with my roommate at the time. And uh, we each had 3DSs and we would play Super Mario Bros and try to see who could get the furthest and the goal was to try and beat the game before the other person beat it but we never beat it because it was too hard for us. I did message him 
for the first time in a while the second I beat this game though. Another thing about beating Super Mario Bros is that it's that kind of game where you can struggle and struggle and run into wall after wall after wall and feel like you can't progress and then the second you beat it, you can turn around and just beat it again. It's like once you know the levels, once you know everything the game has to throw at you, it kind of can't trip you up in the same ways. And like once you're used to the physics and the jumping, it's just a lot easier to get by. And so I found that after I beat the game, I was able to go back and beat it again the next day, almost no problem. And the next day, almost no problem. The thing about skipping levels though, it's just like you, you have to feel a little bit bad for half of world one, for half of world four, for two and three, for even existing, for five, six, and seven, for even existing, if you know the four two warp. It's, I think that if you play this game and you skip the levels and you use the warp zones, you're kind of cheating yourself. You're not getting the full experience. I think really the intent of the warp zones is to just provide a way to kind of show off and talk to people about it, but also to get back to where you may have died before. Because as I said, it is a difficult game. Um, and I think that the warp zones make it a little bit easier to get back to where you might have been and i just i just think like playing through the game especially if you're playing it for the first time i think if you use the first warp zone you're actually hurting yourself because you need to get one ups and you need to get coins or else you're just gonna burn everything and like the castle in world five or the second you get to world seven or in world eight so i would say generally my advice for beating this game would be you need coins to get lives you don't want to skip but at the same time you might want to play around with skipping just to see what's out there and the last thing would would be that playing this game for a little bit and not playing it with the intent of beating it i think is also kind of shortchanging yourself um you're not going to get everything this game has to offer just by testing it out for a little bit like you really have to throw yourself in there and be like i'm not giving up on this game i'm going to beat this game because once you beat it it feels like you understand it a little bit better. I feel like when you hop into an older video game like the original Super Mario Bros, you're really not able to taste what people tasted in the 80s without actually beating it yourself, without sitting down, hunkering down, and beating that game. Another thing I feel like I should say is that uh, before I played the original Mar Mario Bros or knew about the princess being in another castle, that whole thing, I played the game Braid on the Xbox 360 for the Xbox Live Arcade. Um, that game, designed by Jonathan Blow, has a lot of original Mario references in it, and there I didn't really understand them at the time when I was playing, and it's cool to go back and understand them now after actually having played the original Mario Bros. The way that you stunt, like walk up to a big castle at the end of every level and the princess is never there, it's like, I don't know. It's dark in Braid. It's not dark in Mario Bros. Another thing, a few levels that you may have missed if you did always skip that you might want to go back and try. 4-3 is a really fun level and 5-3 is a really fun level. But I will say 5-4, I think, out of all the levels in the game, for some reason 5-4 gave me the most trouble. Um, something about that castle made me impatient and I would always want to try and get the power up at the beginning because I would have died. I'm small Mario, I wanna be big Mario. And so I would try and get the power up, die or miss it and just have to keep on moving on anyway. Then I'd be frustrated and then you just like wind up in the lava. I don't know. I think patience is a virtue when it comes to Super Mario Bros. Each world also kind of has its own like flavor or aesthetic to it. Um, the first few kind of feel kind of samey. I will say my least favorite pipes are the silver pipes. I don't like the way the silver pipes look as much as the green pipes or like the orangey gold pipes. Um, and another thing is world six, I find the black background, um, like the nighttime kind of feel to it. I don't appreciate that. Um, for the most part, but 6-3 when you have the gray bricks and the gray castle and there's the um, like the red sort of glow to the clouds, that's the prettiest level in the entire game to me. World 7 also is really hard. It might be harder than World 8, but World 8 is really hard. Um, 
I don't know. 8-3 is also like, 8-3 is a joy and a frustration to play at the same time. It's very difficult, but it has so much going on. There's a lot of hammer bros to get through, but it feels like an appropriate sort of climax leading up to the final castle. I guess the final castle would be the climax, but it kind of isn't. Um, oh, and for, <laughs> speaking of castles, I'm way out of order on all this stuff. I apologize. But speaking of castles, just look up how to do 7-4. I somehow got 7-4 the first time, like, with just without even trying. And then every other time I was like, where am I going? I don't know what order. Am I supposed to do the order of the levels? Very frustrating, 7-4. Uh, Probably the most frustrating in the, in, in the whole game. So... Is it a must play game? I think it depends. I think um, if you want to experience older Mario games, there's always Super Mario Bros. USA, AKA Super Mario Bros. 2. And Super Mario Bros. 3 is just kind of like, I mean, spoiler alert, I will be playing it again for this series, but it is just like perfection in a video game. Um, so do you really need to go back and play the original Mario Bros? Because as I said earlier, I don't think it's worth playing unless you're playing it with the intent to beat it. If you're someone who cares about the history of video games and, or honestly, even if you're just like, if you're curious to the point where you feel like, I think I'd like to beat that game, I would say that it is a must play. But if you're someone who's not interested in it that much to begin with, then I think it's safe to skip. For me, it was a must play and I don't regret playing it. I had a very good time playing Super Mario Bros. I will say, though, that, you know, if you're expecting... There's not, like... I don't know. Like, there's kind of, like, a twinkle in Balloon Fight. And even an Excite Bike that kind of, like, isn't fully in Super Mario Bros. Like, there's this magic to those games. And maybe I missed it. And maybe it's something I'll find with time. But I'm, I'm just not sure that I... I felt the magic 100% in Super Mario Bros. It had its moments. I'd say instead of like I was doing the wrong warp zone in 4-2 and when I finally figured out about the 4-2 skip, that area above feels magical. 6-3 um, feels magical. Beating the game and listening to the music feels magical. I love all of the castle levels. You know what? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's there. It's just like, I don't know. I can't quite put my finger on it, but... Um, there's a certain magic in some of these other Mario games I've played. Maybe it's the bias of having actually played games in this series before. But anyway, I've gone on way too long about that. The game's fantastic, obviously. And while I think that other Mario games kind of have outdone it, it still does things that other Mario games don't do that I think warrant playing it if you're a Mario fan. But um, yeah, thanks for watching.